G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. The last time we spoke, I used a small portable setup to get a photo of Carina, arguably the best, biggest, brightest nebula you can see from planet Earth, which worked out pretty well, I thought, except for the fact that it sucked. Well, no, it didn't suck. I'm being a bit too harsh there. It's just, I don't know, man. I'm not used to such a small telescope. Now, I said that size didn't matter, but we all know deep down inside, size does matter. And you know me, you know the sort of stuff I'm packing under the hood. It's huge. I've been using Celestron optics for years. Little ones, big ones, big black ones, big white ones. There's a reason I keep buying them and keep buying them at bigger focal lengths. I love probing deep into deep space. So before Karina disappears from the skies again this season, I wanted to have a quick poke and see if I could recreate that classic James Webb Telescope first light image, Cosmic Cliffs, which we saw almost one year ago today. Uh, an image that literally knocked us off our seats and blew us all away. You can see the field I'm talking about in a really tiny little portion of that image I took last week. And I saw this and I'm like, I think I want to do that with the big telescope. So buckle up and let's go stick our big equipment in Karina's folds. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Couldn't have asked for better weather for this project, so I got going with the hydrogen alpha channel first to get that uh, nice detail layer. But when I blinked the images, I could see that my stars looked a bit eggy, and specifically there was a little bump happening at the bottom left of the star, and that meant I had to go collimate the telescope, which is funny because that's not something I've done for, well, basically since I bought the telescope. The telescope's been absolutely perfect but I've used it for long enough now that the collimation has slipped a little and so I had to get in there and, and make some adjustments which you can see in the time lapse here. But I got it so close to perfect that I found that my images after that were starting to come back even better than before which made me really excited. At this point I was pretty happy so I just kept going, kept collecting data until the moon came back and wouldn't let me collect any more data without huge color gradients and whatever. I wish I just had more time to do more. Uh, maybe I'll come back to it, but I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. So here's my attempt at recreating the James Webb Space Telescope Cosmic Cliffs in natural color. Now that's pretty cool, right? I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with the color and the detail and all everything in this image. A lot of the stars are looking great. Unfortunately, I'm gonna mark this as a failure. I know, crazy. Why would this be a failure? The thing is, as I was taking the color for this image, the collimation was off. So if I pixel peek on this image, you can see some of the stars have like little hats and uh, it's really weird and it only affects a tiny corner of the image. I believe this might have been something to do with tilt as well, but I'm just not 100% sure yet. So I went back, I dismantled the entire image train. I looked for everything. I looked for dust, I looked for tilt. I actually ended up installing the new QHY filter wheel. I've had to redo my back focal distance to make sure that I was in. But at the end of the day, it's good enough for Instagram. It's not gonna win any awards, but I'm pretty happy with this image and I'm gonna move on to another target. I think I'm gonna give up on this one until next year. I can retry doing the James Webb Space Telescope field. I did get the field though. So despite the little hats on these uh, stars in the color data, have a look. It's amazing to me to see what is revealed 
what is there and what's not there. The infrared that JWST uses can actually pierce through the clouds. So you can see in the clouds of my image, if we pull them away, we can actually see some of the stars being formed in the interior of this nebula, which is really impressive. All of the blue stars in the JWST image are visible in my image, but many of the red stars are hidden in my image, but totally available in the JWST image. It's really fascinating to essentially X-ray this target with the James Webb Space Telescope. And it's really fascinating to see the differences between these two images. Watch what happens when I blink them. It's insane. Oh my God, have you heard the T? There's a big retailer in the United States who has just gone under or is for sale or something. I don't know, the details are hazy, but you know who isn't for sale and who isn't going out of business? That's right, your boy picked the right horse again. High Point Scientific, an American retailer out of New Jersey who will sell you anything. If you want to recreate your own James Webb Space Telescope field, you can do it. But not from New Jersey, because you can only see that in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> too bad, so sad. But you guys have some great stuff up there too. And if you want to take photos of space, you can do that. In fact, you can recreate my whole setup using the links down below. So check out www.highpointscientific.com. It's always something with this hobby. The constant cycle of problems and problem solving, and debugging, and getting to the bottom of things just to eke out a few better pixels that nobody will ever notice except you. Uh, we are our own worst enemies, but this is the hobby. Uh, you know, maybe I should buy an automatic telescope and uh, push a button and have everything work. <laughs> Never. I love my big telescope and I love pushing the limits. So I'm going to continue to do that. I'll take you along as I learn and hopefully you learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to do them too. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.